Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's kind of what we're getting at today, right? How do I find joy in the midst of trials? I can't do that on my own, man, because the trials are just too hard, just too difficult. I can't lean on my understanding because my way is going to be so much different than God's way, right? When I face trials, I'm going to want to do this, and I'm going to react in this way, and I'm going to go over here. But he says, don't lean on your own understanding, how you view it, right, in that practical way, but how he views it and learn from him. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Trust in him. Seek to obey him, and he will make your paths straight. This isn't about keeping your chin up. I hate that that kind of version of Christianity. Oh, because you're a Christian, just put on that smile and move on forward. No, 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 no. It's not keep your chin up, hang in there, you know, you'll get through it some way. No, what this means and what James is saying, I think ultimately is, look, our trust is in him. And it doesn't, at least it shouldn't, depend on our circumstances. We trust in him and we depend on him regardless of our circumstances. And especially in the difficult circumstances, we look to him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's really hard because I know you and I know a lot of you and I know a lot of your struggles and a lot of your pains that you're going through. And this is tough. This is tough because it doesn't jive with the way we think or the way we think it ought to be and even maybe the way it should be, right? And yet, we're called to trust in him and look to him and take his word for what it is and and rely on his promises right if you say this lord i don't feel it i don't understand it but i believe it that you will take my burden away that you will give me comfort and joy in the midst of my pain that's what it is trusting him in every circumstance now listen i'm going to give you a warning i want you to heed this warning if you kick and we come to him, and we cry out to him, and we bring our complaint to him, and that's cool because he invites us to do that. But if you kick too hard against him, if you fail to rest in him, then something's going to happen to you in your relationship to the Lord. You know what's going to happen? Over time, you are going to become resentful towards him. Because I've been in this situation so long, and this person's not coming to faith, and I've been praying for them, and my situation's not changing over here, and it's so difficult. And God, why you do it? And eventually, what's going to happen? If you don't come to that place where the psalmist comes at the end of his lament and says, but Lord, I trust in you and in your mercy, what's going to happen to you, man, is you're going to start building up some resentment towards God. Hmm? And what's going to grow in your heart is a root. It's called a root of bitterness towards him right you'll begin to blame god for your circumstances eventually you will drift away from him and you're going to lose confidence in him that he can't do it that he, that he is not sufficient okay and here's the deal instead of the trial whatever it is being a test of your faith and trusting in him we end up putting God to the test. You see that? That's, that's kind of a little switch that we do sometimes. Instead of seeing this trial and leaning into him and what can I learn from this and give me an opportunity to trust in you, if we let that go too far and we gain that resentment and God, you're not doing it, and God, you're not giving me what I want, if you would just do this, we end up inverting that relationship. Instead of growing in our faith, we end up saying, God, prove yourself to me. Okay? Then... I'll trust. Prove yourself to me, and then I'll praise you with my lips. Prove yourself to me, and then I'll have joy, and then I'll have peace. But first, God, you've got to do this. And why aren't you doing this? And until you do this, I am going to put up that wall. Towards maturity. And what James teaches, in that little passage we read this morning and throughout his book, is unwavering trust and hope and confidence in the midst of your trials, no matter how long they last. Understand? Paul was in prison unjustly and unrighteously with Silas, and what were they doing? 
They were singing praise to God. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the pain, they were singing psalms and praise to God. It doesn't mean that they weren't hurting. It doesn't mean that they weren't difficult. It doesn't mean they weren't angry. But they were singing praise to God. You see that? That's, that's what we're pushed to do, man. That's, that's towards maturity. That's trusting. It's like Jesus. Lord, if you could deliver me, if this cup could pass before me, let it, because it's hard, it's a trial, and it's difficult. If there's any other way, do it. But then what's he say? Not my will be done, but yours. 